Thank you, Chris, for joining sure. us for our ambassador interview. So this is Chris Nova, and why don't you do a quick introduction of, of yourself? Okay. Um, hi, I'm Chris Nova. Uh, I work for Heptio. I'm a developer advocate here. Um, contribute to open source Kubernetes. I've been contributing to Kubernetes for like two years, and uh, last year I joined the CNCF as an ambassador. And here I am. So we're here. We are here at a show. Okay. What are you doing in your free time? What am I doing in my free time? So when I'm not contributing to open source, which is a lot of my free time, I would say I'm usually climbing mountains. Okay. Yeah, mountain climbing. What's a good source for where you're finding good tech news and stuff that you learning about the industry or that you're sharing? My Twitter feed. Your Twitter feed. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I should already follow your Twitter feed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I mean I get so I sit next to Joe at the office, so I feel like I just constantly get like a lot of that kind of like delivered to me on a silver platter because he usually goes through and finds all the good stuff and just t tells me about it. Um, I spend a lot of time on Reddit. I'm mm -hmm. a, I'm a moderator for the GoLang subreddit, and okay. I'm, I'm active in the Kubernetes Reddit as well. Um, Twitter is a great source. A lot of my friends kind of do the same thing Joe does, where it's like I'll get like handpicked tech articles that kind of come my way on Twitter, and I'm pretty selective about who I follow. So I think a lot of it comes through there. Yeah. And so what do you see as like next big things coming up in cloud native? Next big things in cloud native, um, I think, or containers or open source. I guess. Yeah. I, I think the big thing for me, like, and this is like I'm so narrow-minded because I like work in a very unique small section of open source, which is uh, the Kubernetes infrastructure layer, or I guess what little bit of it is even there. But I think the next big thing for me is is looking at um, taking this idea that we can write cloud-native software like Kubernetes to manage and mutate uh, underlying infrastructure and taking that and and building out uh, Kubernetes self-deployment, Kubernetes auto-scaling primitives with some of the work we're doing in upstream like sub cluster lifecycle. So uh, I wrote a book on it called Cloud Native Infrastructure, mm -hmm. and it kind of goes really deep down the rabbit hole in a lot of this stuff. But I'd say over the next year or so, we could really start to see the software layers kind of coming in and, and making the infrastructure operators' jobs like much more elegant. Okay, so is that taking it even like a step closer to the enterprise, or do you think you're there already? I mean, I think like we're there philosophically, or mm -hmm. like uh, we have the ideas in place, and I think like we've we've all kind of done enough on our own to demonstrate that this stuff works. It's now a matter of coming together as a community and saying, okay, how do we as an open source community under the CNCF want to go through and, and actually solve these problems? And what are those APIs going to look like? And what is the software tooling going to look like? And um, we're at like the proposal phase, which is like the most exciting phase because that's when everybody just gets to like you know talk and say whatever is on their mind. So I'm I'm really happy right now. Oh, good. Sure. Are there certain things that you really like doing in that role, or I mean, so like I'm the only developer advocate at Heptio right now, and I came over from uh, developer advocacy at Microsoft. So like the two ends of the spectrum, where it's like an entire like army of developer advocates versus it's like just little old me. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of what I'm doing is, is kind of understanding what's going on in the community and then really like what is the user experience like for people not only running the tools and using the software but creating the software and what does that look like and then advocating that back to the community, back to Heptio, like kind of connecting that together and being that li liaison. And a lot of that like even spans the scope of these open source meetings. Like it's here at KubeCon, it's like out at other tech conferences, it's mm -hmm. at meetups, it's kind of anywhere in the wild. Twitter actually is a great resource as well. So Wow. Yeah. That's great. So people are connecting at events, meetups and or conferences, meetups and yeah. Twitter. And I'm just like the garbage collector. I just take all this noise and like <laughs> sleep on it, go climb a mountain, think about it, and like, oh, I can make sense of it now. And there's like this like really important revelation I just had, and then go deliver that back to you know the community or the, our company or whatever. Excellent. Yeah. We are on the topic of cloud native. Yeah. Tell me, what does cloud native mean to you, and how would you explain it to somebody who's new to this field? God, that's such a great question. What does cloud native mean to me? Well. <sighs> Okay, so I have a really weird definition, but I'm just gonna say it because I feel like some people will get a kick out of it. When when I hear cloud, I think HTTP or probably HTTPS, um, which to me is like that represents like the the REST APIs and the interfaces that cloud providers put in front of whatever infrastructure you're mutating or whatever services you're mm -hmm. mutating. So whenever I think cloud, I think like oh, because it's good old HTTP, I can interact with that with software. So instantly it goes from me connecting wires in a server room to curl minus capital S S L. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, oh wow, so now it's this automatable thing. And then native, like to me, is this sort of 
it implies that like your application is sort of reaction driven. It's like we're looking at our application within the context of this new way of doing things over HTTP. And like, what does this new application need to look like? What form does it come in? How is it different than before? What does the new shape of the application look like? So writing a cloud native application to me usually means writing it from scratch. Although there's this really interesting like concept of what about migrating to a cloud native application? Like how do we take this application that wasn't designed to be ran in this like new way where everything is exposed over an interface and, and actually go and try to migrate that and turn that into a cloud native app. So cloud native, it's like this new way of thinking about apps and um, I don't know, it just introduces a lot of new paradigms. So you're, you're an ambassador. Yes. So what, why did you join? What do you like about the ambassador program? Um, I joined the CNCF ambassador program. Like I do a lot of work, so I work uh, directly with folks at the Linux Foundation, folks at the CNCF for the uh, diversity committee, and I'm involved with the whole diversity scholarship effort. Um, just in general, I'm, I'm constantly advocating for the CNCF as part of my, my day job, like we talked about earlier. Um, so I think it was just kind of like a natural fit. Like I think I was doing everything like that an ambassador would normally have done, like without the actual ambassador title. Mm -hmm. And then Chris Anacek was like, like, come on, just like sign up. We are already doing it, like might as well. You get a vest. Yeah. And then I, well, I got these really awesome hoodies and they have like my Twitter handle nice. on it. Yeah. So it's really cool. So we know you're mountain climbing. Yep. Indoors or outdoors? Outdoors. Definitely. Absolutely. Got a favorite place? There's indoor mountains. Um, there's indoor climbing. Indoor walls. rock climbing. Uh, yeah. my, my favorite place to climb. Oh man. I mean, so I, I just moved from Colorado and there's uh, 58 mountains there that are called the 14ers and there mm -hmm. are 58 mountains that are 14,000 feet or taller. So I climbed all of those. So Little Bear was my favorite there, but I just got done. Um, I free soloed Mount, Mount Rainier, which means I climbed it with like no ropes or nobody else with oh, me. Wow, wow. Um, and that, that was like the most intense climb I've ever done in my life. Um, so that's probably my new favorite place now. How long did that take? I was up there for three days. <gasps> wow. Yep. Good for you. Thanks. <laughs> There's not many people that have done that. Yep. Okay, and then the last question is um, hiking or literally anything other than hiking? I hate hiking. <laughs> and I like I have a whole blog article on this. I know, I read the blog article. Yeah. It's a really good blog article. Thanks. So, um, well, good. Well, I'd love to talk more about the mountaineering in Colorado. We can do that off camera. But thank yeah. you so much for talking about the Ambassador Program and Cloud Native. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, great cool. talking to you. Thanks. Thanks.